Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Rigby, but in the past I was usually referred to as Reckless Rick. Thinking back, I suppose I did dance to my own beat, albeit a rather careless jig. Yep, in my time I have seen and learned a good thing or two, and now I feel the need to share some of those with you. However, before I do divulge, let's be clear. Many good times passed me by before I learned to be a caring volunteer. But still, that is not enough, I feel, as my long trail of misbehavior caused many an ordeal. But I believe I have found a way to help other critters and also relieve my regretful ho-hums. The answer lies with my dear diary, the stories of my reckless life and some inspiring outcomes. So if you are willing to learn from a rowdy raccoon's mistakes, then hear me out, and maybe you can get on your happy path sooner, and also avoid the regrets in any nasty fallout. My echoes will introduce you to some of the critters I met as I did roam, and it was those same critters that inspired me to create better days and a happier home. I will also share how in a burst of color one sunny picnic day, all of my lessons collided just as I was about to snack on a dessert tray. Yep, it may have taken a while, but I found my happy place, and it was all because of some hefty handlers and their suburb advice. Now my days and those of everyone around me have become, well, simply put, better. Now that they're sprinkled with nice, I vowed in the distant past to kick the reckless to the curb and to spread more cheer. Embracing that vow has not only lifted other spirits, but has filled my soul with pride year after year. Enough with the chatter. Snuggle in, let's begin. It was a snowy, very chilly day way back in 2010. I had just finished my lunch and was ready for a nap when three hefty handlers approached my pen. Next thing I knew, I was being escorted to the back door where they tossed me to the curb. Right behind me came a scarf, a red diary, a crayon, and a bow tie, plus this piece of advice which turned out to be rather superb. Go find yourself some good character, Mr. Reckless Raccoon, or you'll be back on the inside before you know it. Yep, that is what they said. Well then, good character it would be. I was not sure what it was, but if I couldn't find it, I was sure I could steal some instead. That would have to happen later, but right now I needed to find a place to hang my nifty new bow tie before the black claimed the sky. So I headed down 10th Street to the west side, and by the time I reached the heart of the city, I was so tired and sore I was ready to cry. I roamed the west side until the street lights came on. I was lost and in a dizzy daze. That metropolis was all new to me. I had been shuffled from zoo to zoo so many times, I was not sure where I was or where I should be. What I did know was that I was not going back to the inside. I wanted a place to call home and feel some pride. Right at that moment, though, I just needed a place to sleep. It was snowing hard and the night had taken the sky. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, a monkey appeared and said if I needed a place to stay, I could give his shadow a try. He also said that I could help tidy up in return, and I thought to myself, Good luck with that, Mr. Monkey. Your cleanliness is not my concern. We headed off, and once we reached his lair, the monkey shared his humble dinner with me, and we had a little chat. He seemed nice, and I was glad he was not some monkey dingbat. Mr. Mo, that was his name, said that he was heading back to the streets in search of some grub for sunrise. Fetch plenty, I told him, adding that I had a hankering for some french fries. Then just like that, Mr. Mo was gone and my first day on the outside was coming to an end. There I was in an unfamiliar city on a lonely boulevard, crashing in an unknown monkey's bunk, thinking that maybe I had found a great new friend. I sat for a moment hypnotized by some adjacent jazzy lights and I realized that I was feeling a little giddy. For the first time in a very long while, I was going to bet high on hope and low on self-pity. It must have been the thoughts of a new beginning coupled with the comfort from a monkey that seemed to care. 
that Mr. Mo Monkey was kind, and I even thought for a moment that I should make him aware. I then closed my eyes in search of sleep, but tossed and turned all night without a peep. I was tired and hangry as the sunrise broke, and there were tempting aromas caught up in the snappy breeze. The smells had me hoping that Mr. Mo had found french fries covered in gooey cheese. However, that is not what Mr. Mo managed to gather out yonder. In fact, it was a combo that I had never had before, and the smell made me stop and ponder. Mr. Mo had proudly presented me with a feast of banana peels and kidney beans. I was not a fan, no way. While I studied the meal, Mr. Mo took time to fill me in on good character, and I won't lie, I did not like what he had to say. You need more than one good character trait to keep you out of the inside, and you cannot steal them no matter how hard you try. Yep, he said, that is true, and he added that a reckless raccoon that gains good character could earn respect. And I really wanted some of that, too. I absolutely do realize that Mr. Moe's sunrise surprise was his way of helping me get back on track and find my happy place. But at the time, I was very annoyed. A job prospect is not a delightful surprise, it's a disgrace. So much for kindness, it was not nice of him to assume that I would want to work my days away. When would a working raccoon ever find time to nap, snack, and play? Yep, Mr. Moe had bumped into Burl while gathering grub the night before. Earl is the owner of the pastry shop, and she was looking for help each day from sunrise until four. Well, Mr. Moe had the audacity to set me up with an interview, right after I finished the morning chore and some tea-like mysterious brew. If he tells me this, then off he goes to wherever a monkey must go. I was so mad I skipped my chore and sipped on my brew real slow. I finished my sipping, then crawled back into the bunk and caught a few Z's. Once I woke, I put on that snazzy bow tie and headed to the pastry shop, chucked full of bunnies. And wouldn't you know it, I got the darn job too. At the time, I had the gall to think it was my charm. After all, I was sure that I had more than enough to astound. But it turns out it was my many years of favoring cakes that impressed Burl. She said I must have the most experience around. I guess that is where the miscommunication happened, because while I was speaking of favoring cakes, I meant eating them. She thought I meant decorating them, for goodness sakes. Of course, with her believing I had years of experience, she hired me on the spot. So with much hesitation, I began the first job I ever got. It was around midday when my cake decorating boss gave me a wicked side eye. It seemed that Mrs. Daisy took offense at a joke I made about one too many cakes. And yet, fur did fly. She went off like a rocket, waving the dough roller at me as she told me exactly what she was thinking. Heck, Mrs. Daisy was so furious she was not even blinking. She complained that I was taking too many breaks, but I only had eight. She said between breaks all I did was admire myself. Yep, I am good looking and there was a shiny cake plate. She also blamed me for the sprinkles that wouldn't stick to the cake. I will give her that one. I did eat all the icing off the cake, and it actually gave me a wee headache. Anyway, she quit. But I did not care, because when she left, I instantly became the boss of me. So I shut down the decorating station early, and dashed to the diner for an eating spree. And fill the belly I did. I ordered myself one rhubarb milkshake. Two double poutine with extra cheese, two slices of cherry pie with maple walnut ice cream, plus a couple of mugs of fancy teas. Once I finished, I went to the loo, washed up, and snuck out the back door. Although that meal was so fine, I did consider staying for more. Back in the day, the old buffet and bolt was the only way to go, until it landed me on the inside. I thought maybe I had learned a lesson, but clearly no. Anyways, I made it back to my roomie's bunk after a scenic wander, and I found Mr. Moe looking a tad bit somber. So I tried to cheer him up. I told him all about the new job, and that I had become cake decorating boss by midday. Surprisingly, Mr. Moe replied only with a huff, a snort of sorts, and a sarcastic yay. 
turns out that he had been waiting to share his dinner with me, and he had been waiting for more than an hour. I kindly explained that I had already eaten a fabulous hot meal. Not to worry about me. Go ahead and devour. I did feel a little bad for Mr. Moe's mood, so I suggested that he might feel better if he headed out to fetch us some fresh sunrise grub, informing him that I already had french fries, but would really enjoy a meatball sub. I then scooted into the bunk, nuzzled in, and was once again captivated by the jazzy lights flashing from colored signs on the roadside. That was also about the time I decided since I was the boss that the new start time will be 10 a.m. and all morning orders will be pushed aside. Then I shut my peepers and tried to imagine my very first decorating gig ever, a birthday cake. But my mind wandered off wondering why anyone would want me to decorate anything for goodness sake. Before I knew it, a loud are you sleeping startled me awake and it was disappointing. How dare he, I thought, after I had adjusted my entire day so that I could snooze later into morning. He continued on clanging and banging, keeping me from my extra snore. Then I heard him babbling about leaving a meatball sub by the door. First off, let's be clear, there was no door. And secondly, by the time I got up, the sub would be cold. Now he is messed up too. No, make that three meals, which may deserve a bit of a scold. Someone truly nice would have wrapped it in foil to keep it warm. Sure, Mr. Moe did not know that there was a change in my wake-up plan, but he is still losing his charm. Then I heard him declare, have a splendid day, and he hurried down 10th Street holding an enormous sack. That really ticked me off, so I gave the can a good hard smack. Well, that did not help a thing. The ringing in my ears hurt, though. You would think I would learn a lesson, but again, no. Then what exactly had Mr. Moe said that angered me? Well, he said, have a splendid day. As he did flee. Mr. Moe Monkey woke me up early, left me a meatball sub that would soon be frozen, and then wishes me a good day. I wondered who he thought he was trying to kid. Well, it was not Reckless Rig, no way. He was surely jealous because I was a boss and I suppose that makes me better than most. However, I decided to let it slide. I did not want to lose my bunk, so I stayed mum to the host. But that splendid day stuff had me so riled up there was no way sleep was going to happen. I got up, ate a partially frozen sub and decided to go to work and whip me up some strawberry icing. I was craving a tub. I arrived at the pastry shop just as Burl did and she was extremely excited. She had a very important contract for a cake decorating gig. She said this would be the advertising that the shop needed. But it must be ready by noon and I must incorporate walnut and fig. Burl then asked me not to skimp on imagination and to decorate for royalty. Well, holy moly, the pressure was on. I am getting like totally. All I cared about was whipping up some icing and chowing down on a tub. Then maybe I would give some thought to that cake hubbub. The only thought I had, though, was that I would surely be fired once this cake was finished, so I may as well go out with a bang. Yep, I let my imagination go wild. Burl was speechless. At first, all she could say was, Dang! Then she quickly started to sound like Miss Daisy and added that I was heartless and lazy. Then I heard, Your help is no longer required. You are officially fired. Well, that job didn't last long. Yeah, <laughs> although I have to say, I thought I made a pretty good boss. I whipped up that icing like a pro. The closest I had ever come to a job before that was selling random scooters. But that also ended quite quickly. I had to get out of town and lay low. Unfortunately, I did not lay low enough because I spent the entire past year on the inside. They did let me out to find some good character and I hope a smoother ride. I would have been well on my way too if Burl hadn't been such a clown. But that was fine. I was quite tired from all my work and needed to lay down. When I reached my cozy bunk, I found a jam full to the brim with many layers of fluffy fleece. 
Yep, I figured Mr. Moe had put them there, for it was his bunk to do with what he pleased. However, it was snowing hard and the wind was nipping at my ears, so I cleared the bunk and settled in to dream of better years. And dream I did. I saw myself sipping from a coconut while floating on the deep blue sea in a yellow polka dot brocini. However, reality struck and I was suddenly jarred awake by Mr. Bo Monkey who had morphed into Mr. Mo Meany. Yep, he was one angry dude. Oh, no, you didn't, he cried out and then he accused me of throwing his fleece for the homeless out onto the wet, dirty ground. Well, as true as that was, there was no choice. I needed that bunk so I could lay my head down. It felt like Mr. Mo Meany had taken crying, mad, and sad, and jumbled them all into one. Hold on there, Funky Monkey, I said. You are not being nice. He used to be fun. Mr. Mo Monkey then delivered a few choice words, which made me feel more uncomfortable than I like to be. Buddy, Mr. Mo began. You already have character, but you need to change it from bad to good, if you can. Reckless rig, you ooze bad character in all the things you do. The ways you act, the way you feel, and the way you think, too. Why do you feel it is not important to help a friend with a task? What makes you think that you can do as you please instead of a favor, one may ask? Please tell me why you find it funny to throw an insult. Do you not see the stress you are bringing to others or feel bad that it is your fault? He said that my response to the police for the homeless was appalling, and then finished with, Pack up your things and be gone, no stalling. Mr. Moe's words stung a little, but perhaps he thought that's what I needed. I grabbed my stuff and down 10th Street I proceeded. I was on the road again with no real destination until I was stopped two blocks away and handed a citation. Busted for the buffet and bolt I had done down at the diner. So how about we catch up in 30 days or so? Unless the zookeeper is a real hardliner.